Omega fatty acids are naturally found in foods such as fish, nuts and seeds and plant oils and often included in healthy diets with proven outcomes. Omega-3 fats have important benefits for your heart, brain and metabolism, while omega-6 and 9 fats provide your body with energy. Therefore, these have been made into supplements and sold worldwide at a cost of over 2 billion US dollars. And pharmaceutical companies have tried to extract a very specific fatty molecule and licensed it for reducing the risk of cardiovascular events in people with high triglycerides. I will go over the evidence of the benefits of having omega fatty acids in your diet and whether the evidence shows that these benefits occur when it's taken as a supplement including what type of supplements and the dosages and the potential side effects. I will finally touch upon the NHS guidelines that mention omega-3 fatty acids and why there are targets to reduce the cost of these on prescriptions. There will be timestamps in the description box below as well as references. But before I start on the content, here are my disclaimers. I'm Eloise, I'm a UK pharmacist of 20 plus years and I'm enthusiastic about clear, accurate information on medicines and supplements that everyone can understand. The information I provide is for educational information only and is my own opinion. However, I do my best to base it on the most up-to-date evidence. As always, contact your own healthcare professional for your individual advice for your own personal situation. Also, if you can like, subscribe and comment on this video that will be the best way of spreading the message about my information far and wide across the youtube platform and support me as a content creator thank you omega fatty acids are naturally occurring group of fats with the number indicating where the double carbon bonds are along the chemical structures I will quickly cover omega-9 and 6, which are mainly used as calorie sources, before going in detail of the omega-3 fatty acids that are the most advertised and sold as having benefits. Omega-9 fatty acids are monounsaturated, meaning that they only have one double bond, and they're mainly used by the body for its energy. Olic acid is the most common type, and it is found in olive oil, avocados, nuts and seeds, and eggs and even in some meats. Although omega-9 fatty acids aren't classed as essential as the body can produce them or use other fats, there are benefits for using these instead. A 2015 study found that people with diets containing omega-9 fats had less information and better insulin sensitivity than those who ate diets high in saturated fats. I see no need of getting a supplement for the omega-9 fatty acids but this should be a factor in where you're getting your dietary calorie intake of fats from. Omega-6 fatty acids are polyunsaturated fatty acids classed as essential as you can't make it in your body from other fats. The most common type is linoleic acid and is found in many vegetable oils such as soya bean and evening primrose. Even though omega-6 mainly provide energy for the body, it does play a key role in the immune system and encouraging inflammation. And diets rich in omega-6 can show reductions in long-term cardiovascular risk. However, some studies show supplements of omega-6 can increase inflammatory markers, causing flares of certain inflammatory diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis. Other studies also show that omega-6 may be linked to obesity but it is unsure whether this is due to the total content or the proportion of different types of fats in the diet. As the data is inconclusive for omega-6, it is best to be very cautious of any supplement claims. And when looking at the fats within your diet, be aware that it may be a better energy source than saturated and trans fats, but the overall calorie input from this type of fat should be limited. Omega-3 fatty acids are also essential polyunsaturated fats and are part of the support structure of every cell in your body. As well as giving you energy, they impact your heart, lungs, blood vessels and immune systems. There are three main types of omega-3s and your body can change between them so that you can eat the non-fish sources and still get the benefits. So there is Echosampanatoic acid, known as EPA, and it's found in fish. 
docosahexaenoic acid, DHA, also found in fish, and the alpha linoleic acid, ALA, which is found in plant foods. Fish that contain the high levels of EPA and DHA are the oily ones, such as anchovies, trout, salmon, sardines, and tuna. And the vegan sources of the omega-3s include beans, chia seeds, flaxseed oils, soya beans, and walnuts. It is recommended that you get between one and one and a half grams of omega-3 fatty acids every day as part of a healthy diet. And this can be done from two or three servings of oily fish and or nuts and seeds a week. Although it can be worth noting that these fats do have a high calorie value. So other areas of your diet should be modifying, such as reducing saturated fats, and there is no benefit for getting too much of these fats. Actually, omega-3 deficiency seems very rare and there's very little research into it. But if you were to get it, symptoms do seem to be a rough scaly skin, a red itchy rash. Uh, but most of the research is for taking omega-3 into excess, either in the diet or as a supplement. The main area of research for omega-3s has been for heart health. And the research has shown that eating Fish high in omega-3s may reduce your odds of cardiovascular disease by lowering your cholesterol and triglycerides, which are a type of fats in your blood. And there's been many observational studies looking at many different diets and all the diets that such as Mediterranean diets that contain high amounts of foods containing omega-3, both the fish sources and the plant sources, all do, do seem to show lower cardiovascular disease. And the one common theme does seem to be the omega-3s. So this is why many of the um, companies have produced fish supplements. And there's even been pharmaceutical companies that have looked into these supplements and done proper randomised controlled trials. But these do not seem to produce the same amount of benefits. There is some benefit in lowering triglycerides, some benefit in maybe reducing cardiovascular outcomes, but it seems to be that it's not just the omega-3s that causes this overall reduction, but more a chance of the actual overall diet that contains omega-3s and the other um, factors that come along in this. And sometimes even in these fish oil supplements, although they may um, reduce... Um, risk factors of certain cardiovascular disease, it sometimes also shows an increase in other types of cardiovascular disease, such as AF, which could potentially lead to stroke. So the um, evidence out there is not fully conclusive. When it comes to, to looking at sort of maybe some of the specific omega-3s, there has been recently a specific type of omega-3 that has been extracted and used by the pharmaceutical company and it does seem to show that there is some evidence that this one specific element can be used to help lower triglycerides and potentially um, be used to help lower the risk of cardiovascular effects. The other thing that's co come to light is that Many of these studies have been done more recently in the last couple of decades where we now have everybody, well, the majority of people that have got a high risk of cardiovascular disease or have had um, previous cardiovascular events are now on statins. So the majority of the people that would be very at high risk and would benefit from omega-3s, the majority of these are now being treated by statins. So the overall risk reduction that we can actually provide um, benefit for is less because we've already reduced the risk with the statins and this could be the reasons why we don't see the same benefits of omega-3s as we originally thought in the studies that were done decades ago. Um, unfortunately finding people that don't want to lower their risk by statins and only want to do it by omega-3s and having enough significant numbers of these people to do those studies is probably not going to happen. So that does then need to become 
an individual risk assessment done between you and your doctor on whether you want to go the route of a statin, the omega-3s in your diet or the omega-3 supplements. And there is only you and your healthcare professional that can do this. The next biggest area of research and um, medical claims for omega-3 is in regards to brain development. It is known that omega-3s are required for um, brain development in infancy and it is recommended that when you're pregnant that you do take um, enough omega-3 into your body to aid in your baby's development. Although one thing I would suggest is when you're looking at supplements with omega-3, always be checking about the vitamin A levels within that and that it is suitable for taking with pregnancy because too much vitamin A in pregnancy can be problematic. If you wanted more information about that, I have already done a video about vitamin A toxicity. Um, it's also known that Children during their development should get enough omega-3. Many of the children's vitamins, multivitamins out there, quite often do say with the addition of either fish oils or with omega-3. And we do know that making sure that, um, that there isn't a deficiency in omega-3 does help promote brain function. Although when it comes to actually giving supplements of omega-3 of children to actually boost their brain function or treat any actual conditions that evidence isn't there so one of the areas that they've looked at is um, for children with autism and children with ADHD which as we know is a neurodevelopmental disorder of the way that the brain is wired differently rather than any sort of deficit in the actual way the brain has been made and people have tried using the omega-3 fatty acid supplements to try and see if it can improve the undesirable effects of ADHD and autism. But unfortunately, they haven't been shown. And even um, NICE have put in their um, recommendations for autism and ADHD that omega-3 supplements shouldn't be recommended as they are not going to be of any help. Um, another um, area is for the, the treatment of depression. We do know that people who have low fat diets and who could be deficient in omega-3s could be more likely to suffer with depression. And there has been several clinical trials with um, people having omega-3s who aren't getting relief from their antidepressants. And the meta-analysis does say it may slightly relieve some of the symptoms of depression, but there is a lot more research needed because the studies have got very mixed results. But it is something that, you know, if you are suffering with depression, maybe have a look at your, your diet and if improvements can be made with that. And if it can't, whether you wanted to add in a supplement. The other end on um, cognitive decline as people are getting older they do find that those people in areas of the world where their diets are rich in omega-3 the mediterranean diet like i've already mentioned they do seem to have better um aging with um less memory loss less alzheimer's disease and dementia and so research has been done and it does seem that omega-3s can have a protective of uh, Effect against cognitive decline, but so just to suggest that this is when it's a part of a healthy diet and not as supplements, and it also needs to be taken for it needs to be in your diet for decades prior to reaching the age of the cognitive decline, and is not something that you can suddenly take as a supplement as you realise that you do have some cognitive decline. Although the supplement companies out there have many, many, many more claims for omega-3s, when actually looking at the evidence, there's only a couple more areas where I actually found that there is some evidence. So autoimmune diseases. So the omega-3s in the fish and fish oil supplements may help with some um, autoimmune diseases, such as rheumatoid arthritis, lupus and Crohn's. But we do need a lot more research to understand how they work. 
And as I said before, it does seem to be a balance of omega-3s over omega-6s, because as I said previously, omega-6s may actually worsen autoimmune diseases. Also, they have found that um, children with asthma, if they actually have a diet that is high in omega-3s, it does lower the, the child's chances of having symptoms from um, indoor pollutants. But again, um, the research shows that this is from the diet and foods that contain this rather than um, from supplements and also more so eating foods that are rich in the omega-3s and less of those with the omega fatty acids from such things as the soya beans and corn oils. When it comes to actually looking for taking omega-3 supplements, if you feel that you need to because you, you cannot get it from your diet and you would like potentially the long-term benefits on your cardiovascular health and your um, brain health, then make sure that you, you look at the products you're wanting to have about one gram to one and a half grams in a daily intake. So if it's from fish oils, you want to make sure that it's got the DA. A or the EPA and if you're wanting it from a vegan source it will be the ALA but as I said before your body is able to swap between these itself so it doesn't matter which one you take either the vegan or the fish um, it doesn't really matter um, the price although just take into account on the manufacturer so you want the manufacturer to be a decent manufacturer that does do quality control but you do not need it to be overpriced. When it comes to interactions, they don't tend to have many interactions because it is usually a normal part of your diet. There is some interactions with some immunosuppressants for people with um, transplants. So if ever you are on anything from your doctor, it is always worth saying whether you want to start omega-3 supplements. Also, if you were to take any medication that was to stop you absorbing fats, then obviously if you're taking them at the same time, you're then not going to be able to absorb your omega-3 because it is a fat. Um, when it comes to, to side effects um, from the fish oils, um, they can actually, because of the fact in you're taking fish, it can cause a bit of bad breath and bad smelling sweat, which some people get when they eat fish. Um, sometimes can cause because you're ingesting fat it can cause indigestion nausea sometimes a bit of diarrhea sometimes a bit of an unpleasant taste in your mouth and very occasionally like with pretty much any um, medication um, some people can get headaches from them but in in general they are very well tolerated as long as you stay in that range of one gram to one and a half grams daily I wouldn't go above that. There doesn't seem to be any benefits in going to above that in any of the trials. And it is just extra calories because it is fat. For this section, I will share some of the NHS prescribing data that is freely available to everyone via a website called openprescribing.org. This website shows all the NHS prescriptions for GP practices and dispensed by community pharmacies in England. And you can do analysis on specific medications and GP practices. However, they do have some predefined reports comparing parts of the country on specific NHS evidence criteria. So there is um, NHS um, England guidance that say that omega-3 fatty acids are items which should not routinely be prescribed in primary care, except for one specific um, omega-3 molecule that has been patented by a company. So even though omega-3 um, fatty acids um, there are products out there that have been licensed by pharmaceutical companies for lowering um, cholesterol and lowering triglycerides and to, to pre for secondary prevention of people who have had heart attacks. Um, we've gone through all the evidence and there's more and more evidence comes out. There's less and less evidence of them actually providing value above and beyond that of statins. So many different NICE guidances have looked at um, the omega-3 fatty acids for them not to be given after a um, myocardial infarction, for them not to be given to prevent cardiovascular disease, for them 
not to be given um, <clears throat> for the prevention of CVD, for them not to be given to help with non-alcoholic fatty lipids, um, not to be um, used for sleep problems in children and young people with autism, for them not to be used for familial hypercholesterolemia, and for them not to be used for multiple sclerosis where there is zero evidence. So there's many areas, but the overlying reason is for that they should not routinely be prescribed in primary care. There is much more evidence for encouraging people to get omega-3 fatty acids in their diet. And if they do need a medical intervention to lower their risk of um, cardiovascular disease and problems, this should be the statins, looking at um, their risk of diabetes and keeping their diabetes under control, looking at the risk of um, hypertension and keeping their blood pressure within range. So I can um, look at this data and we can actually compare different areas on England to see if there are specific areas in England that do actually prescribe more than other areas. And as we can have a quick look here, although there is the average and the average for the whole of England is reducing, there are some areas of the country where historically there has been a lot more prescribing on prescription for the omega-3s and um, pharmacists and GPs in those areas will be looking at reviewing those patients and seeing if they can optimise their um, therapy to be on more effective products than omega-3 and taking them off prescription. So as you can see, the, the top three um, areas of the country there is um, East Sussex, West Lancashire and South Sef Sefton. I'm sure all of their um, areas will have this highlighted as an area to, to look at and as you can see the majority of areas um, are going down and although there are some areas that do book the trend for whatever reason and as you can see you can see some areas like NHS Kirklees obviously had a massive um, review of all the patients and tried to review many of the patients off this is one of the jobs that I do in my day job, working as a prescribing advisor for an integrated care board. I work with GP practices, helping them review the patients and ensure they're on the most evidence-based therapy. And as we move down to the areas of the country with the lowest prescribing of omega-3s, um, let's just see if we can get right to the bottom here. Um, North Yorkshire, Bassett Law, East Essex, still got a few more, oh, a lot more ICBs than I realised. And here we go. So we've got South Townside, um, Castle Point and Richford, NHS Wakefield don't seem to have any prescribing at all. And the lowest there is Ipswich and East Sussex. So yeah, so there is still a bit of a postcode lottery on whether the GPs have been updated on the most guided, the most recent guidance and reviewed all their patients and optimised. Uh, my next video will be on statins and we will look at the data on statins to see which areas of the country are using more statins and less statins. So make sure that you're subscribed if you want to stick around to watch that video. So my final thoughts. All the benefits in studies and long-term observational um, data seem to show that it's on diet containing omega-3 and not supplements. So they are, supplements are not a replacement for diet and many of the benefits are maybe due to the other nutrients consumed alongside the protein source that you're, that's alongside your omega-3, so your fish, um, the other vitamins that may be contained there. And also the fact that using these sources, you're reducing the amount of saturated fats within your diet. Also, all of these benefits are about long-term health go goals and ensuring your best function of your cardiovascular system and your brain and in lowering your risk factors. Therefore, a person who is looking at a holistic um, view of their health alongside their diet are more likely to reduce other risk factors rather than just relying on a supplement and it 
and expecting the supplement to be the thing that is lowering your future risk. So they may be of help if that you really don't like eating um, fish, seeds and nuts. You may feel that there's benefit to put this in your diet, um, especially if you're leading up to, to getting pregnant, but obviously the caveat of looking at the vitamin D. Also, maybe if you've got a child that is very reluctant to eat a variety of different foods, you may want to um, give them a multivitamin that contains um, omega-3. If you do find out that you've got a high cardiovascular disease um, risk factor, you may also want to do it. But when you do, there's no need to go for expensive supplements. Just ensure that it's a company that you know will check the quality. And also, there is no need to overdose. You only need to have one gram to one and a half grams as anything more than that is just added calories. And as I said before, the evidence is for omega-3. Omega-6 is very doubtful and omega-3 and omega-9 is purely just calorific value. Thank you for watching. And if you have got this far, please comment with either fish, seeds or supplements on how you get your omega-3. If you found this video interesting, then please like and subscribe if you'd like to, the YouTube algorithm to share this video and for my future videos to show in your feed. Have a look at my previous videos on other subjects I have covered, such as the vitamin A toxicity, ozempic injections and melatonin supplements. And please comment with any questions that you have and any ideas that you would like me to produce future videos on. Thank you so much for watching. and letting the YouTube algorithm spread this information further.